Today, we're gonna to dive deep into transitions in Final Cut Pro. Whether you're just starting out or looking to take your editing skills to the next level, I'll guide you through everything you need to know from the most simple transitions all the way to installing and even creating your own custom transitions. And stick around because I've actually got a custom transition template that you can download and use in your own videos. So let's get started. All right, so we're now inside Final Cut and I've got my cup of tea, so we're all set. All right, so first of all, I've got this project open just with a bunch of clips from a video I recently published and I'll start off by showing you the most basic form of a transition in Final Cut Pro. Apart from a hard cut where it just goes from straight from one clip to the next, the next most basic type is a crossfade and you can add this super easily. This will likely be your default transition. All you have to do is click in the area between the two clips so you've got this little yellow line that appears and then just hit command T and that will automatically add a transition which is a crossfade between the two clips. So if we play it back, it's gonna give us this nice smooth crossfade. Now, generally speaking, that's probably not the type of transition you want for most of your videos. You might, and if you do, that's cool, but we actually generally want and can use much cooler looking transitions than this. And in order to find these, just go over here to this little transitions button here. This will open your transitions menu. On the left-hand side of the menu, you've got all of your different categories of transitions. So if we click through these, you can see I've installed a whole bunch of custom transitions on top of the pre-installed transitions that come with Final Cut Pro. With the transitions inside your inspector, you can actually click them and then just mouse over and move your mouse back to get a preview of what the transition is gonna look like. And you can generally do this with any of the transitions just to get a quick idea of whether or not it's something that you want. This is, is one of my personal favorite transitions. <laughs> not really. But let's just imagine I like this arrows transition. I wanted to use it in my video. All I have to do is click it and drag it over the area that I wanna make the transition. It doesn't matter if you've got one clip or the other clip highlighted, but just let go and that will automatically add that transition. So if we play it back, we can now see that that transition has been applied between those two clips. Now, what you will have noticed is that you've also got another transition added to the end of this clip that was highlighted. So this is generally always going to happen if you're dragging your transition over a clip and you see it highlighting the entire clip, it's going to add that transition to the end and the beginning of the clip. And you might not want this. For example, if I just undo this one, over here, I just wanted the transition to be between these two clips. I didn't want one on the end. And in order to remove this transition, it's super easy. Just click on the square area where the transition is sitting and then hit delete or backspace and that will remove it. Now, another thing you can do to customize your transitions once you've added them to your clips is to adjust the length. So if I play this back, I wanna make it faster so it goes by quicker. Now, all I have to do, I might just zoom in a little bit, is click on the transition so it's highlighted in yellow and then move my mouse to one of the two sides of the transition. And this little double arrow with the line in the middle icon will appear. Just click and drag. And as you can see, we can make it super short or we can make it super long. Now, like I said, I want it to be a bit shorter. So Let's drag it to about here. And we can see that the total length is 12 frames long at this point. So if I let go and then we play this back, as you can see, it's going to be much faster. I could make it even faster if I want. So that's still too slow for me. Let's make it six frames, play it back and boom, super fast. The same way, if you want to make it longer, just drag it out, play it back. And as you can see, the transition is much slower. Now from here, you can continue to customize a lot of transitions to make them really unique to your video. And in order to do that, we use the inspector window up here. Now, just make sure your transition is selected in yellow like this, and then your inspector window will change to have different options for your transition. And just keep in mind, not every single transition will have different options like this. Some won't because they're quite basic, but there's also a lot of transitions that have customizable options. Just click on your transition once you've added it and have a look up here, see what options you've got. You can always play around with it. So on this particular transition, we can change the end cap on the arrow. So if I change it to round, you can see instead of having those arrows, we've now got these sort of circular lines, which I actually quite like. That's actually kind of a cool transition. I might even shorten that, see how it looks, play that back. That actually looks pretty cool to me. So you can see going from a kind of like unusual, maybe a bit of a weird transition, we can then customize it to make it look quite a lot better and suit the style of our video more. We've also got a few other options that we can make it into square lines or we can make it into bevels. So we've got these kind of pointy shapes but I really like the round and then we can even turn on motion blur. So if we play this back, 
that also looks pretty cool. So again, you can make some really cool custom animations, even just with the basic quote unquote generic transitions that are pre-installed inside Final Cut. Now I'll just give you one more quick example of a transition I really like that you can customize. And I use this one all the time. And it's called the slide. So if we just search for slide in the search bar down the bottom, make sure you've got all transitions selected so that it searches through everything. And then you should have this little slide transition. And this is pre-installed with Final Cut, so you should have it on yours as well, drag and drop it. As you can see, this is gonna give us this kind of cool slide overlay transition. And this one is also very customizable. So we can do slide in, slide out. So if we do slide out, it's gonna take the top one off and remove it. Got slide push, which pushes the frame across or slide swap, which is also kind of fun. My personal favorite is slide out and they can even change the slide direction. So often I'll do up or down. So let's go down. And that's going to bring in the new frame like that. But again, just try a bunch of different transitions, see what customizable options there are, and you'll often find one that will really suit your video. All right, so what if you've gone through all of the pre-installed Final Cut transitions and there's none that you're really gelling with? There's none that quite suit your project and you want some different ones. Well, the good news is, like I've already shown you, you can install basically unlimited custom transitions right into Final Cut. And for me, I've already installed quite a lot of different transition packs that I've downloaded from the internet and you can get a lot of these completely for free online from transition websites. You can also use paid services like Motion Array. They're a great source of effects like this. I've actually used Motion Array to get transition packs like this, but just do a Google search. There's heaps of really good options online, but let's just imagine you found a really cool transition that you really like and you want to use it in your project. So for example, for me, I really like this Bronx transition pack. How do you then go about installing it? So you've bought it or you've downloaded it and you've got files in your finder. So for me, I've got this folder called transitions that I keep on my computer as a backup. And right here, we've got my Bronx transitions folder, which I've downloaded from the web. To install it, you just have to copy and paste this folder into the right folder on your Mac. And I'll leave it in the description, the actual file path. I'll show you here. It'll be on your Macintosh hard drive. And then in users, go to the user that's your name where you've got Final Cut installed. So for me, it's Nick Kendall. And go to movies, motion templates. And then in here, you've got effects generators titles and transitions, which is what we're looking for. And again, I'll paste this folder structure into the description so you can just follow along and find it on your own Mac. But from here, all you have to do is go into our transitions folder and just make sure we copy and paste this folder of transitions into the transitions folder on our Mac, which you can see I've already done here. And then it's just a matter of closing and reopening Final Cut, and then it will appear in a folder right within your transitions inspector. And it's worth noting that with some of these third-party transitions, they won't be as customizable. So up here we can see in our inspector window, there's no customization options. However, there are other third party transitions that you can download that are super customizable. So it's really just a matter of giving different ones a go and seeing what works for you. So lastly, I wanna to talk to you about how to add your own fully custom transition. And this is without any of the pre-installed or third party transitions that you can get online. So the way I do it is to download short little clips quite just like this one here. So this is a film burn. These are really handy for transitions. So this is just on loop right now, but it's basically just a little short clip that's meant to simulate the look of some film or something like this. So it's kind of like a little scratch effect or a bit of a grunge effect, super quick. As you can see, it's like all of five seconds long. So it's a really short clip and you can download this sort of thing for free off stock websites like pexels.com. I highly recommend checking pexels out if you haven't used it before, but you can find little texture effects just like this really easily online. Just download some ones that you like that you think will suit the style of your video, add them into your project and then just click. And for me, I'm just gonna make sure the entire clip is selected and drag it over this section of the video that you want the transition to be in effect. So let's just go to that same spot in my video. And then we can see this is where the cut happens. So I want to drag it about halfway. So it's half on the first clip and then half on the second clip. And then all you have to do is make sure it's selected and then go up to your inspector once again and go to compositing. And then where it says blend mode, you'll typically want to change this to screen. I definitely recommend experimenting with the different settings to get an idea of what each one does. So you might need to change it depending on the type of clip that you're overlaying. But for me, screen often is the best option, especially if your clip has a black background like this one does. And as you can see, this is gonna make it kind of see-through. So now if we play it back, 
that actually creates a really simple but very cool and quite custom transition. And this is one of my personal favorite ways of creating transitions. Not only does it look cool and it's really unique, but it's also even simpler in some ways than using an effect from within Final Cut. Now again, if you wanna adjust the length of your transition, just go to the end of the clip, make sure it's highlighted, and then hit Shift B. And this will bring up your clip speed adjustment. All you have to do is just click on this little line at the end in the green bar, and you can click and drag and make it faster or slower. So let's just make it a little bit faster, make it about 200%. Same thing, move it over the clip, so it's about half on each clip. And then if we play that back, it's got a really nice quick and snappy effect, which I personally think looks really cool. Let's just disable that and we can do the exact same thing with this clip here. So let's just drag this over. As you can see, it's quite a bit longer. So I'm gonna adjust the speed right from the beginning. Let's go to the end, hit shift B, grab the little line and just make it faster. So let's go about this fast and then let's make it half on each clip like that. And then we're gonna repeat the same process. So go up to blend mode, change to screen. It's gonna make see through, at least in the dark parts. Then if we play that back, we've got this kind of cool grunge transition. Once again, I think it's looking a little bit too slow. So I'm gonna speed it up quite a lot, move it back into position. And then if we play it back, that actually looks pretty cool. I'm actually a really big fan of this. And I actually use this particular clip for transitions in my videos all the time. So if you recognize it from other videos that I've done, nice work. The last thing to add is some sound design. I just like finding sound effects that sound kind of what I imagine the overlay would sound like if it was audible. So if this kind of reminds me of like a chalkboard being written on or something like that, maybe textures. So I've got this pencil write sound, which I've just added underneath it. And same deal, I usually just adjust it so it fits within the length of the clip or just a little bit longer. So something like that, so that it matches up with my transition. And this will just take it to that next level. It'll make it really immersive and increase the engagement of your overall content. Now I know you can't hear the audio from this clip, but if you do wanna hear it, I wanna include these three files into a Final Cut Pro template, which you can download. And I'll even include some sample clips like this with all of the correct settings set up so that you can get an idea of how you might be able to replicate this in your own content. And if you wanna download that, just check out the link in the description below. If you found this guide helpful, then please like and subscribe for more tips on how to master Final Cut Pro. And if you're still just learning the ropes of Final Cut, then make sure you watch this video here where I'll get you up to speed on everything you need to know to get started with your first project in only 17 minutes.